Hello guys and welcome to episode 3 of my Stellaris playthrough as the Skusterserken Alviari. So, uh, today's uh, objective is probably going to be to colonize more planets. Now there's actually a second planet available in the NF system, so we are likely to colonize NF5 even though we do have these negative modifiers on the planet, which kind of sucks. But it being quite a big planet, it's kind of worth colonizing it anyway, unless we can find another planet that is more beneficial. But once we start surveying the rest of these systems, we should be able to find if there's any more desert worlds. I need to really expand my borders a bit more, maybe get a wormhole generator on one of these edge systems so that we can try and explore a bit more because currently we have this system here, Turbocore, uh, Enif and Zer, which are nearby and colonizable. But any other colonizable planets or habitable planets nearby are non-existent. So we are going to definitely have to expand our wormhole radius in order to get to those. But we are, uh, <laughs> we're a long way from having to do that yet. So. We're just going to stay as we are. My little fleet Systems here, I can just mess good. around with that until I'm waiting for stuff to happen. I'm going to keep things running at fast. This science ship needs new orders. He is down here. So let's head to Siddhar. Euthonian civilization encountered. And... Our society research is complete so I am going to want to get this sooner than later which is the quicksand basin removal because on desert planets that is quite common as you can see quicksand basins there and on our home planet actually that won't matter too much because we can get rid of all of these anyway and I will want to start doing that soon I also want to start building buildings soon so, uh, what I'm going to do is clear that sprawling sums there, or slums there, and I'm going to probably build Colony established. a hydroponics farm here, also a hydroponics farm here. They only cost 42, System survey because complete. we have a lot of bonuses that reduce our construction cost. So here we can see that the fleet order is finished. We have established the colony in Enif, and you can see our energy income has gone to plus five now. And I think my science ship completed something. Yeah, system surveyed and a level up for one of my leaders on the science ships. Okay, so at Verl Takar, you can see that we have taken up this tile with our with our population. I'm going to enslave them straight away to increase that to plus four food. And I will do the same with this tile once that population is created. This blue bar at the bottom here underneath the population shows their growth. If we click on the right here, our outliner we can go back to this planet system survey complete and I was thinking that I might enslave this populace and build a mining network here to get some extra minerals it will not allow us to maintain the energy income from that tile but I'm also planning to move this incoming population to this tile that I just cleared and create a power plant to give us some extra uh, energy. So failure risk is 12%, that's fine. Let's just keep with, up with these anomalies. Critical failure can be annoying, but there we go. So over here we can see that the influence of the Kroldar is expanding towards us. And I think they built a frontier outpost here. That's the only way that I can think that they have so much influence because they don't have a second planet there because you can see the planets that they own. Anyway, my construction ship 
is going to go to Izak and create a building uh, mining station there. Situation log updated. And then I might bring him to build a mining station over NF4 so that we can gain these minerals and then save for a second colony ship. So this science ship is finished. I'm going to go head up to Codria now and survey that system. So a wormhole station costs 75 minerals. Really tempted to build a new one, maybe at Seganus. But because we are a despotic empire, we have the birth of space piracy. Rebels and dissidents fleeing from Skisteron have founded an outlaw space fleet at the fringes of our space and by modifying several civilian vessels into warships. Calling themselves the Void Pact, these terrorists are spreading chaos and fear among our civilian, along our civilian shipping lanes. Their lives have been rendered forfeit by the enormity of their crimes. Order must be restored at any cost. So we don't need that scum. Um, they will have system a survey system nearby that they have a little base on. So I am going to need to construct new military ships. Let's build a couple more corvettes. And I've got to be careful at places like Osmodin, yeah, where they are going to attack me. So... Let's get my guys to Wormhole out of our solar system and head to Osmodin. Osmodin. Because they are going to attack my uh, mining station over here. Fortunately, because we use uh, Wormhole, we can get there very, very quickly to defend that. Station under attack. My Hostile mining station will engaged. fight back, but. Not as well as my Corvettes will. So you can see on the bottom left here, this is our battle window. One of my Corvettes will probably die by the looks of things. But a lot of their ships are damaged. And when we destroy one, the other two will quickly follow. Situation updated. And this is our overall damage output and our hit ratio so we won there we go now what we can do is get the science ship to actually come over here and research these wreckages and that will give us bonuses to our engineering research I think but let's take this fleet back to repair and they can join the other two ships that I just built so what we'll do is probably find those pirates somewhere at some point. Research. Now if we go to our situation log, we have all of these investigate aliens. So what I'm going to do is research them all at once. It will stop my society research, but we just completed it. So research completed. now we're going to go for planetary unification. I'm also going to get the plus 5% research speed. Better to get that sooner than later. Construction complete. Awesome. We're doing really well. We have plus 20 or plus 20 minerals per turn. Currently we're using minerals to repair our fleet. My construction ship has finished. Let's take him to NF2 System and then complete. back to Turbo Core so that after and if has had its mining station finish, mining station finished, we can create our colony ship. Debris analyzed. So there we go. Debris analyzed. That is the science ship researching the pirate vessels, and it's giving us plus ten percent progress towards nano composite materials, and plus five points towards physics research, and fifteen towards engineering. So that science ship is finished in that system. Let's go to Dib or Dub now. 
some of these system names I'm going to butcher, so please bear with me. <laughs> That's probably going to be a common theme throughout this playthrough. A lot of the alien species names are very strange. The void clouds, we have investigated them. They will all pop up at once in a second. Um, an investigation into a peculiar cluster of debris and space dust has yielded surprising results. It is a particulate cloud bristling with a powerful charge of unknown origin that has no business exhibiting simple reflexive actions, let alone movements with purpose. And yet it does. There is something undeniably ominous about the hazy subject of the relayed video feeds. Perhaps there are things in the universe we should not tangle with. So let us watch, but not interfere with it. Situation log updated. So now we have a situation complete. log Special specifically about those uh, aliens that we came across. So, Tianqi. The space-born life forms, which the Skista Cirque and the Head of Society Research has come to refer to as the Tianqi, are docile creatures capable of accessing some lower dimension of subspace. They roam from system to system with relative ease, though nearly the same ease as Schistoserum fleets. They graze on the gases common to the upper layers of many gas giants. It is highly unlikely, to say the least, that this is their only food source, but intake of other nutrients has yet to be observed. They will rarely attack, if ever, attack, even when provoked. They can safely be ignored. Okay. So we have another one pop up. Crystalline Entities. The reports of strange, free-floating crystal-like objects observed in certain systems have been investigated. The ship size objects and their slightly smaller but equally crystal-like satellites at first appeared to be at first appeared inert but sudden shifts in their orientation relative to our ships and new energy signatures emerging from within the prisms indicate that they should be regarded as hazardous and approached with caution even should we not find a martial use for them studying a shattered crystal would no doubt yield interesting results So we are probably just going to break them apart. We expect our fleets to break Situation them apart, that will do. Updated. Debris analyzed. All right, let's get my fleets together here. <laughs> One of my science ships is doing nothing, so let's continue to survey systems. And I am going to want to look at some of these systems that have alien vessels in them soon. But not before I create another colonist. So my construction ship is heading back to Turbacore. Might actually be worth building this mining station just here before we continue. And survey complete. Though oh, through our surveys of habitable worlds, our biologists have collected a vast amount of data on alien life forms. Many of our older theories on the development of life have been disproved, and our scientific community has had to build new models from scratch. Our most interesting findings are being displayed at the newly dedicated Museum of Ze Exobiology on Skisteron. The public is enthralled, and many donations have come in to aid in the continued search of strange life forms. So we just gained 317 society research and 121 energy gains, so that's wonderful. That's going to help us greatly when we colonize a new planet. Mm 
So there we have our construction ship appearing. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, actually, is that the Despotic Empire gives you the availability to build an oversized uh, military station. Or in this case, it's listed here as a ruler military station. And I think they're basically like upgraded versions of your ruler stations or maybe just ones that require less uh, upkeep. But um, the reason that is so good for like wormholes is because what you'll do with wormholes is you'll have the wormhole stations and then you just put like loads of military stations around them to prevent them being attacked and to stop you from losing your ability to fly uh, because with wormholes if this thing here is destroyed I can no longer fly to other systems which can be really really bad so our influence is uh, becoming quite large uh, I was tempted to build a frontier outpost sort of over on this right side uh, actually that's what I might do if we can find a really nice Research location complete. I will place a frontier outpost and a wormhole system or wormhole generator in the same system so our research is being complete so we get extra research influence complete. now and now what I'm going to do is go for probably extra naval System capacity before we go for the slave army. Found. Let's research that, 0% risk of failure. And we're going to get the defense platforms. And the reason I'm going to do that is because we do match the void craft there. And we have enough to build a colonist. So let's slow things down a bit and build that. Now the other thing I need to do is build a solar panel network. I've actually forgotten to do that for a little while, but when we hit the next month, we can build that because we are currently gaining 26 minerals per month and we are only nine years in. So that's quite something. Uh, Wickla 4A has just gained a plus three engineering research bonus. And Velrab here, that has Bitharian stone. Okay, so that's quite interesting because now what I can do is if I go to the surface of my planet, which I should have been keeping an eye on, um, we can build a Bitharian power plant and use that Bitharian resource that we have to run it. Now I also need to clear that debris and that debris here once we can afford it. and that's so that my population can continue to expand and what I'm also going to do is move a population from here we can resettle them but we need to get a planetary administration on our secondary planet first and we can only do that once we have five population this population needs to be enslaved this one can also be enslaved and that will help juice few more minerals and food. I'm going to keep that without a building for now because I don't want to cancel out either of these. I'm going to put a mining station on there eventually but I want to keep that food there for now to help the growth. Okay, so my science ships are literally doing nothing at the moment. Is there any way that we can get around that? Let me go to my spaceport. And after that colony ship has finished, I need to build the solar panel network for starters because that gives us uh, three Research energy credits complete. per month. And then more corvettes. And that will allow us to clear out some of these systems so that I can survey them with the science ships. I should also probably uh, enact some edicts, considering we have a lot of influence. I mean, max out at 1,000, currently we have 393. I could literally select all of these, and we get a, roughly, I think it's a 10% bonus on all of my technologies. 
Yeah. So instead of getting 30% on one and minus on the others, if we activate them all, we get plus 10% on all of them, which is really good. Uh, oh, Arid. We can already get the colonization text. That is really, really good. This is awesome. Okay. So we are going to want to get the uh, Arid tech, mainly because it's really useful. Although that Tundra one, let's just have a look at these Tundra ones before I select that. Okay, Tundra uh, colonization is not so good because we only have 20% habitability on Tundra planets. And the habitability affects the output of your population on the particular planet. So anyway, we have a new contact. We have bumped into the League of Spiritar. So the Spirans. I am delighted to offer you cordial greetings from the League of Spira Qatar. <laughs> we have built a peaceful system of government that operates under the supervision of a council led by Coordinator Feathers of Green. May your great species know nothing but peace. Our warriors salute you. That's kind of ironic, but there we go. Okay, so they are below us. Uh, so they are below the Krull Sovereign tribes. Complete. And I think they're pacifists. So they won't be attacking me anytime soon. Um, anyway, we're going to go for Arid World colonization just because that is OP as hell this early on and I can continue to colonize. So we have another colony ship. We're going to take them over to Enif. And we will colonize that planet. So uh, we are going to choose here, right in smack bang in the middle, to colonize. And encounter in Osmodin, we have discovered Iota aliens. My construction ship is going to go to Akbal and build a mining station there. Now, I know for some of you guys, uh, you're probably shouting at me to... Uh, build on these uh, engineering research and science research, like physics research and so on. But honestly, I don't think it's a viable use of minerals early on at all. So I'm not going to bother now. I'm just going to save again for another colony, colony ship and we will settle on Xur 2. Probably on this tile just here on the right. Up here, very tempting to put a frontier outpost because an extra four minerals and four energy is always great. This one would probably be better though because the that would only require one mining station to get three minerals there. Yeah, it might be worth building it there. Once my construction ship is finished, I'll probably build frontier outposts and maybe a wormhole generator up here, but there isn't many stars in that direction. I think I'm better off going almost towards the middle. Um, oh, I know what I could do. Construction complete. I could build a frontier outpost on Akamna and build a wormhole generator there in order to guarantee that arid world. How big is that arid world? quite big and there's also a euthonian civilization there which are in the atomic age so these are this is a, a sort of faction that has not found space flight yet so we can observe them and be those aliens that abduct their kind but uh, we'll probably just destroy them or make them slaves one of the two so Anyway, let's get my construction ship to head over here and create a frontier outpost for 100 minerals and 200 influence. That will give me a influence area over here and stop these blue guys from continuing their expansion in that direction. So once Gisteron you can see that we now have this 
Batharian power plant in play, which gives us seven energy per turn. And what I also need to do is build science labs on the society research tiles. But before I do that, I'm going to move that one to there and build a hydroponics farm. Because the idea of my uh, initial settlement is going to be like a relocation center. Uh, so I'm going to basically breed on my home planet and then relocate them to other, other new planets once they can be. But with this fast speed, I'm just going to wait until we have enough to get another colony ship. You can see uh, Yul Yor or Verl Yor is halfway or over halfway to colonizing. And my science ships will soon be able to do something. I'm actually going to take them both to Akamar. My spaceport, after it's finished another colony ship, will focus on more corvettes. And these corvettes that I've already built, I'm going to go scout out these systems which had enemies in them and see if I can kill any of them. Research complete. So uh, one of our technologies was complete. We now get increased research speed over the board. And we are going to go for deflectors. And that will unlock deflectors for our ships. So that's a void cloud with 178 power. We have 168. We would win that, but I don't particularly feel like losing any ships at the moment. So I'm just going to bring them back to Skisteron and build some more Corvettes. Complete. Now you'll notice the price of my Corvettes will go up over time and that's because we are constantly upgrading them with the Colony Auto Best. So our colony has been established. Our second one in the Enif solar system and it has the decrease in habitability because of weak magnetic field and also unstable tectonics but the happiness doesn't particularly matter that growth time won't make too much of a difference so we're just going to enslave that population And we will wait for them to reproduce. On my second planet, we are on three population, nearly four. Once it gets to five, we can upgrade our initial uh, like place here, our initial building to a planetary administration. Then it will provide us with minerals and food. And then I can also move some of my population from my original planet to that planet. Research complete. So I'm going to start building a power plant there. Because that population is nearly uh, born, I would say. <laughs> they are nearly born. <laughs> Our defense platform is complete in terms of research. So now we're going to go for destroyers, again matching the Voidcraft technology there, and that will unlock destroyers for us. And those will be very helpful in order to utterly annihilate the Kroldar, the Kroldar or the Kroll Sovereign States. Right, at Akinar. It might be worth me building on these two planets and that planet there as well. Actually, I, would, I don't need to do it on that third planet. So Construction complete. we're just going to cancel that because I'm actually going to colonize this planet once we get the arid world colonization. So that frontier outpost is finished. What I'm also going to do with my construction ship is build a wormhole station. And what I'll do is I'll build it near my 
world so that it is easier to defend. Wonderful. And now you can actually see that I can build a ruler military station. I just can't afford it at the moment. Construction complete. So we have our other colony ship. Let's go up to Zer and colonize that. Oh yeah, we mustn't forget about Akmal as well. This planet here, we can colonize this, and it's actually a reasonably good planet in terms of output, so. Yeah, that'll be really good actually. Wow, okay, so we're getting a pretty good start. But unfortunately guys, that has been my time. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Uh, as you can see actually, as my factions, we do have a faction now which is our serfs, which is our, basically our slaves. Uh, slave faction made up of primary pop. They don't really do much. I'm not entirely sure what the point of it is, um, other than they want to be free, but they never actually have any effects. I think it's just to show you exactly how many population you have as slaves, but there we go. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's all. So again, if you are enjoying this, make sure you subscribe. Uh, I will continue to upload daily. And yeah, I'm I'm just loving stars. I love this game. I really do. And I hope you guys too, uh, do too. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.